So what's going on with Mick Mars, legendary founding member, lead guitarist of the rock band Motley Crue? What's going on, everyone? This is Christian Duke. Thanks for watching Sight Sound Slavers on YouTube, SightSoundSlavers.com. If at any point during this video you like it, please smash that like button. Please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications so you won't miss a single video. And by all means, leave a comment down below. So guys, Motley Crue has always been my favorite rock band. They have always been my favorite. Actually, let me be honest. Kiss has always been number one. Motley's been number two. Everybody else is number three and below. They have always been my favorite, Motley and Kiss, since I was 13 years old. First record I ever bought was Kiss Destroyer. Second record was Motley Crue, Decade of Decades. I basically bought a Motley record that had all of the songs in one cassette. And I was just totally floored. I just could not get enough. And surely it was very, very upsetting because when I bought Decade, it was basically like six months or a year after they fired Vince or Vince left, however you want to like interpret that. And I was like so bummed. And then I see the picture in Hit Parader with John and I think they were in Vancouver or something. And then I just started anticipating what would become the 94 self-titled album. And man, did I love that record, man. I would listen to that from beginning to end. And if you are a true Motley fan, you own that record. I know that it doesn't have Vince. I know that's very sad. But John killed it. The vocals, spectacular. Mixed guitar playing, probably the best guitar playing he ever did, except for that very, very first album, which I would love to actually own. But that, And I'm talking about the original, because they, they have it on parts of YouTube and parts of bootlegs before Electra, you know, cleaned it up, fixed it up, whatever you want to call it, that raw Motley sound. It almost sounds like a punk record. It's just really, really good. But the 94 album is just mixed best guitar playing because it freed him up. You know, uh, John played a lot of the rhythms and it just let Mick just go crazy, you know. But, um, and, and, and then, you know, uh, th there was no follow-up, which I really wish there would have been. But if you get the uh, Generation Swan record, there's a couple songs in there that I think like Smoke the Sky, which have that kind of, you know, actually Smoke the Sky, I think was on the 94 record too. But but there's a couple songs on the um, Generation Swan album that really feel like they could have been, or I think they were going to be part of that follow-up to the self-titled. And they're very, very good. Mick Mars to me has always been such an integral part of the Motley sound. And I think, honestly, if I was to say, I would say Vince's voice for that record, John's voice, which is very, very good. But, but Vince's voice is Motley Crue. And then the guitars. You know, Tommy's drums are fantastic. He's an amazing drummer, fantastic drummer. One of the few drummers that can actually play double bass drum. And one of the few drummers that can play with a single bass drum and make it sound like a double bass drum. He's an amazing, amazing drummer. He is extremely underrated because of the fact that his public persona is just so magnanimous that people kind of forget about his playing. But, um, and then, you know, Nikki's bass play, bass playing is very hard to become like a sort of a standout unless you're like a, like a Jocko or a Flea or something like that. Um, Nikki's bass playing is really not that spectacular, to be honest with you. Duff McKagan from Guns N' Roses, that is a killer bass player. Kelly Nichols of LA Guns, that's a killer bass player. Uh, Nikki is an okay bass player. You know what I mean? Uh, Gene Simmons, who actually a lot of people also underrate, is a phenomenal bass player. But Nikki is not. Nikki, and I don't think Nikki ever like strived to be a musician's musician. He's a songwriter and a really good songwriter, may I add. But now, Mick Mars, now that's a really talented guitar player. In a in a band that doesn't have a rhythm guitar player. You know, all those times in the 80s that you saw Vince with a with a guitar usually an acoustic guitar. I don't even think that thing was plugged in. How many Motley songs sound like they have an acoustic guitar? I think it, it was an acoustic electric, but still, it, it, there's very few songs. So, and, and sometimes you have an electric guitar strapped on. I don't know if that thing was plugged in. You know what I mean? The reality of the matter is, is that Mick handled all of the guitar duties for a band that sold over 40 million records worldwide. I mean, you know, a band that should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You know what I mean? And uh, the fact that they tried to take his ownership or to water it down from 25% to 5% because he could no longer tour after giving this band the best years of his life, after giving this band years of touring in excruciating pain, uh, to me, is probably the biggest slap in the face that any band could give to any founding member. 
And so a lot of people want to know what's going on. You know, did the suit get settled? Is Mick still in court? Is Motley still... And, and, you know, I got to be honest with you. If the suit had been settled, I think we would have heard about it. You know, I think that Mick finally, finally is taking a stand for himself. Because when I hear Stephen Piercy, legendary frontman of the multi-platinum rock band Rat, say that they were trying to get rid of Mick Mars as far back as Shot of the Devil because they wanted Jake E. Lee to me, suggests that Mick Mars has probably been humiliated more times than he or I or you can count. And that is very, very upsetting because Mick put the money up, which a lot of people don't know for the band, and Mick is the only guy, the only guy that didn't have a Methods of Mayhem, didn't have a Brides of Destruction, didn't have a, you know, a solo band. He's the only guy that's always been there. The one tried and true thing, if you're a Motley crew, is if you call... Mick Mars and say, we're going to be in the studio. We're going to go on tour. We're going to do a radio interview. We're going to write a book. We're going to meet with writers for a screenplay or a movie. He's the one guy that you can always count on being there. You couldn't say that about Tommy or Vince or even Nikki, who is really the owner of Motley Crue. Not even the owner had the loyalty to the bands that Mick Mars had. So to then, when he's over 70 years of age, questionable how much longer he'll live, to screw him out of 80% of his ownership stake is disgusting. So I think that, you know, Mick Mars stood up for himself, you know, and, and, and I think that the fans, they saw that and, and they supported him. And they're still getting big numbers, but why are they getting big numbers? Well, because they're out there with Def Leppard. Let's see them go out on the road by themselves or with some opening acts, not double headlining. I mean, maybe they'll still do it. I don't know. The reality matter is that people a lot of times also fail to realize that just because people buy a ticket to go to the concert doesn't mean that they are happy with the decision. You know what I mean? And, and they have other ways of showing that displeasure. And you know what? I'm going to tell you something else. You know, Motley uh, went after Carmine Apice, legendary drummer of the rock band Vanilla Fudge, because of the fact that he came out swinging for Mick Mars and because he had spoken to Mick. Now, I don't know if Nikki or Vince or Tommy went after Stephen Piercy. I doubt it. Because when you're the front man of a multi-platinum Atlantic recording act like Rat, um, it's a little different than going after a drummer from the 60s and early 70s. But then again, Carmine Apice, you know, he played with Vinny and the Rockers, or Carmine and the Rockers, I think the band was called. He's played with a lot of big names. A lot of big names. And, uh, you know, Vanilla Fudge is pretty big deal. So, um, I don't know, but they went after Carmine. I think they sent him like a cease and desist letter and Carmine just opted that, you know, maybe this wasn't a good fight for him, or maybe he had already said what he needed to say, which he kind of did. Um, but, uh, but I just think that in hindsight though, if mixed departure had not resonated with the fans, Motley wouldn't have acted the way that they did, but there was very important for them and for Alan Kovac, for their manager, to come out and even disparage Mick, at, at, you know, say that he wasn't, you know, competent to make decisions for himself and that maybe his lawyers or managers were making decisions for him because they needed to do damage control. They needed to do damage control because the fans were up in arms and the rock press was as well. I don't know of anybody that has applauded doing what Motley did to Mick. That doesn't mean that people can't applaud them for hiring John Five or that John Five's a great player or that John Five makes the sound good live. That doesn't speak to any of those points, but it speaks to the point that Mick Mars was done wrong. And listen, if you're going to do that to Mick, why aren't you guys, I mean, honestly, if you want to give John a portion, that's the other thing. We don't know if they diminished Mick from 25 to 5 to give that 20 to John 5. We don't know that. A lot of people assume that, and I invite you to leave a comment if you think that John 5 is getting 20% shared at tour. But what I think is more likely the case is that that 20% got split three ways between Nikki, uh, Tommy, and Vince. I don't think for a second that John 5 is getting a 20% interest in the band. Not for a second. Is he getting paid very well? Obviously, because they were able to pull him away from Rob Zombie, who'd been playing with over a decade and a half. There's no question that they're paying him well. But is he getting that 20%? I don't think so. Do you think so? I mean, leave a comment if you think so. So if he's not getting the 20%, then all of this comes down to greed. You did a brother wrong 
so you could put more money in your wallet. And I think that is why so many fans came out in droves, not just on social media, which is not a just anymore. Social media is like life right now, okay? We're all on our phones, computers, tablets. It's not, you can't say just social media anymore. Social media is like it, but not just social media. Also, you know, that shows the buying power you know, people were so angry with Motley over how they did Mick Mars and so proud of Mick for standing up for himself. And look at John Karabi. John Karabi called this before anybody. And that should marinate. Seriously, that should marinate because John called this way before anybody else back when they signed those packs where they couldn't tour together again and couldn't do anything with each other again. And Mick tried to do a solo. See, that's the other thing. Mick tried to do a solo. And out of everybody that came out to help, John came out to help for one song or two. And Motley came down on him. See, there's something about Mick Mars that needs to be said. He is the most talented member of Motley Crue. He probably knows things that a lot of those guys would prefer he didn't. And for so long, for so long, he was a team player. I'll tell you something. When you take 80% of somebody's share and he doesn't fight, this was a time to fight. It was now or never. And he fought. And what's going on? I don't know. But if I had to bet... I would bet that Mick Mars has dug in and is fighting hard and will see this all the way to the finish line.